So I want to make a new dimension, and I used to know how to make a dimension, but Mojang has changed how a lot of that stuff works. So we're going to look into that today. So the idea that I have for a custom dimension is actually summed up pretty well over in here. This is something we made a long time ago, and it is basically space. <laughs> There's kind of like a black hole in the middle. That's a little bit unfinished potentially because a creeper blew it up or something. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, there's like these little solar systems and we can kind of like fly around in here um, using some command block logic that you saw that we passed. And you'll notice uh, my hunger bar is like green and stuff. So like we're actually using up hunger as we sort of like float around in this zero G environment. So I was thinking it'd be cool to make basically a zero G dimension. Okay, so we have the model, but we need to make a choice on which dimension we're going to be copying here. What I mean by that is like in oh, <laughs> each dimension has sort of like a base. Oh, I almost just turned that off. It has like a, a base style. So the overworld, you know, there's bedrock underneath and then there's all the land and stuff on top of it. And then there's nothing in the sky. Oh my. I can't even charge my crossbow. Get out of here. I'm trying to like block him from uh, shooting the portal. <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, <laughs> that was an explosive entrance. Yeah, so the nether is a terrible place, isn't it? <laughs> so the nether generation is kind of like all around you, right? You have bedrock, like if you go all the way below. And of course there's bedrock if you go all the way to the ceiling. So it's got more of a all around you sort of approach to the generation. And then of course you have the end. <laughs> Get ready for a lot of endermen, by the way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> there's a trade off in command block survival that we made where it teleports endermen away from our island. But the trade off is that we can't just delete them for free, so they have to be teleported somewhere. All of these Endermen spawned on our island, and some of them stole blocks from the island that they took here. <gasps> okay, we're going in water. We can uh, kind of escape from the Endermen here. Uh, but the end is different than both of them. There's no bedrock either on the top or on the bottom. There's just these floating islands. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard not to look at them when we get over here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there's no there's no bedrock up or above. I mean above or below. I feel like the nether or the end are our two best options. And I'm actually leaning a little bit more towards the nether, right? Because if we do the end, we're not going to have any blocks spawning like down there. So there would be no skulk. We'd have this like black background, but it doesn't really look like there's stars out there. And that's one thing that the skulk does really well. So I'm thinking maybe we should start with basically the nether as a template for our space biome. So this is the nether dimension, uh, the, the file for it. And it's pretty much just a list of a bunch of biomes. There's a bunch of settings that I don't remember what they do. Some of them are probably new. Ah, okay, this multi-noise. I feel like I remember this being important to like the general design like i think this is partially what makes it so closed in but it looks like we're gonna have to do a little bit of sleuthing here there's more information there's settings somewhere else yep okay so it's in a totally different folder <laughs> and under the nether here oh and if you're curious where i get all of this stuff all this vanilla files and whatnot. I'll put a link for that in the description for the more curious of you. But this is a bunch of settings and is a little bit overwhelming. And I just don't know what all this stuff does. Well, this one's actually pretty easy. Piglin safe. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Has ceiling. True. So this is probably how we can define it to be like to have that skulk at the at the top and the bottom. Oh, here we go. Effects. I bet it, we can change this to the end and get like the sky, probably. Height. 
I don't know that we really want it to be that tall. We might actually just go with 128 ambient light. I think we're going to want to turn that up a little bit. Honestly, I'm guessing at a lot of this stuff, so hopefully that doesn't bite us too hard um, when we try this. Okay, so I renamed that settings file we just modified, and I'm just going to call it Talon Space Settings. You can observe how confident I am. <laughs> One thing I do remember from Dimensions from a long time ago whenever I did it was <laughs> Dimensions can genuinely mess up your world. Like a lot of the other stuff we do, it's like, eh, you know, it's not really a big deal. Yeah. Some item gets deleted here or there. But uh, Dimensions can like corrupt your world gen file so that you have to fix it manually, which I did have to do before. <laughs> so, yeah, we're adventuring into a really exciting territory here. Um, all right. So, this is actually the command block from a long time ago. Oh yeah, you can see Talon Hotspot Double, which does not exist anymore because there were so many issues and uh, corruption and all that kind of fun stuff. And I actually, I think I want to do this differently anyway. So we're going to do something kind of funky. So what we need to check is in the end here, it's those little dimension teleporters. Well, they're not actually dimension teleporters, but I think they would look accurate to a dimension teleporter, right? So what we need is the info from this block. Can we use this to teleport into our dimension? Oh, funky. It has an exit portal attached. And it's OK. I think it's in the same dimension. I'm not saying anything about the end here. Hmm. Bummer. Looks like that is, whoops, not F3. <laughs> Seems that that is only for teleporting within a dimension. So we'll need to go look at the other dimension teleporter type blocks if we want to get to our new dimension. Because theoretically, we're going to be going back and forth a few times. So uh, we, uh, we want something that's going to stick around. ID end portal. Ah, these all teleport to a specific portal location. Oops, not down here. And we specify the dimension ID in another portal, maybe. Target block is not a block entity. Well, <laughs> hmm. Well, you know, we could maybe try something a little bit tricksy here. If we combine the command block with maybe the uh, end gateway. I know we're taking a bit of time on this, but I, I genuinely think this is going to look really cool if we do this decent. So what, what we'll do here is if we make a little like a pocket for us to teleport in. Because you remember there was that exit portal tag. So if we make the exit portal tag be somewhere that we can't normally get, then we can have the command block teleport us to the other dimension. Um, but that way it'll feel like it's more of a normal way of getting there, right? Rather than just, you know, a command block and walking into a wall like it was before. So it would make the most sense if it was pretty much just right below it. So we can just make a little bit of a, a stasis chamber here underneath the command block. So let's get the location here from targeted block 156. So um, since we're prototyping, we're not really going to worry about trade-offs right now. We're just going to set an end gateway and I will put in the exit portal with the cords that we got from B4. So that should, yep. Oh yeah, look, look, that's a really cool effect, right? You know, we, oh, that's a, it's also kind of trippy. So presumably if we chuck an ender pearl, we're going to go down to that spot. That's what we're expecting to happen. It might not happen that way, but hmm. Um. Well, we're not dead. I guess that's a plus. <laughs> okay, let's go take another uh, another try. Ha 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 ha. All righty. So on the wiki, there's an additional tag that was not present in the end gateway we looked at called exact teleport, which we are going to set to one because we want to go exactly to that location. So this should send us down there, right? <gasps> Yay! And there's a purple beam, which is cool. 
Okay, so now what we can do is with that command block, we can check, are we in this location? And if we are, teleport us to the new dimension we just made. This will work, right? Should we maybe not have valuables on us? I'm thinking maybe we shouldn't have valuables on us. <laughs> Ooh, it's all rainy outside too. We must escape the rain. Do you guys think this is going to work? Let's see. <gasps> wow! That's amazing. This might give you a chuckle. So, you know the, the whole like settings file is like, oh yeah, we got to detective it and figure it out. This ain't the right settings file. Like you thought this was scary? Try this. <laughs> it's so big. We're doomed. We're doomed. <laughs> so I guess for now, we're going to just put this back to be Minecraft Nether because that file is absolutely enormous. This is where dimension stuff gets scary. I knew there was one somewhere. I just couldn't remember where. <laughs> that's that's where it was. <laughs> so me and my 48 fish are going to hop back in here. Um, I'm not totally sure what we're going to be teleporting into. It might be weird. Oh, oh, uh oh. It seems that we've teleported into the wall. So is this basically just the nether? Yeah, look here. OK, so the. <laughs> We've made it. We've made an anomaly here in Highlands, but we're looking at Netherrack. That is does not compute. So what I want to know is: is this dimension? This is so far off from the goal here today. I wonder. So is this dimension? Is it End Highlands made out of Netherrack, or is it just trolling us when it says that it's the End Highlands dimension and it's like actually? just basically the regular nether or is it just a giant block of netherrack it could be that too if it's a giant block of netherrack then uh yeah punching punching through might not be the <laughs> might not be the strongest option there okay because i just want to know if there's anything going on i'm just gonna dig straight down it's okay if we die i just want to know whether there's any terrain you know it was definitely a mistake not to bring a pickaxe Okay, I am uh, I'm not finding anything and also I'm realizing that if we're just gonna delete this It doesn't really matter whether there's that much terrain Because we're gonna adjust this biome to be the way that we want it to be You know space So I guess we can just teleport back With a TP command. I don't know where this is gonna put us out, but whatever Hey, we're in a swamp Oh, and there's everything. Okay, so we just got to swim over. Well, this thingy works just fine, and it's super cool. So we'll keep that. Um, Probably need to just go adjust those dimension settings. I'm a little bit scared, honestly. That was a huge file. <laughs> but we got to do it for the episode. Okay, here we go. Take a deep breath. <laughs> uh -huh. It all makes sense. Default block... Minecraft netherrack. So some, I don't know why, but it didn't generate the end highlands. It just generated netherrack. That's kind of concerning. But for our space dimension, the default block is just going to be air. That's a pretty easy change. It should make a pretty huge difference right off the bat. Man, there's all kinds of stuff here. This is ridiculous. Vegetation. I guess it's not ridiculous. It's a dimension. It should have a lot of settings. It's a lot though. Okay, wait, hang on a second. These are maybe not as bad as I first thought. So it says Minecraft bedrock floor. Now we want to turn bedrock actually into skulk. That's kind of kind of the goal here. And if we look result state, it says Minecraft block. And then we see something very normal Minecraft bedrock. Okay, so we can just change this into Minecraft skulk. And I think, yeah, there's bedrock roof down here, so we can do the exact same thing. So that is at least one ounce of progress. <laughs> All right, we got to keep this tangible or I am toast. There's so many things going on. Like we have to make sure that we, uh, I'm looking for a pickaxe here or something to make a pickaxe with. I guess we need to go downstairs. 
There's pickaxes somewhere. Oh, there's, there's wood, I guess. Okay, so we have a pickaxe. It's just a wooden pickaxe, you know, nothing too crazy. Um, there's supposed to be air that's going to generate now. Oh, that was a really great throw. Excuse me? Okay, that's a little weird. Oh, there we go. All right, we're back in the dimen... Oh! Okay, everything that we did here before is still here. We'd have to go into new chunks to generate it. Which would mean I would have to dig my way into new chunks. Oh, wait a second. Oh, there is stuff generated. Oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> and so begins our survival world. No. <laughs> oh, this is kind of weird. Look, Endermen spawn here because of the whole end uh, effect stuff. And look, it's all like purple at, at distances. But then we're getting nether generation. Hmm. Okay, so I should... Probably just delete everything. Although it kind of looks like this is new generation and it's not generating the air blocks it was supposed to. Yeah, okay. So this is new gen. It's weird. There's no ores and stuff. It's like a blank canvas a little bit. Oh, the way I could check if it's working actually is if I dig up to the ceiling and see if there's skulk up there. I'll give that a shot and see what happens. Need to get some blocks. Ah, pickaxe broke. Hmm, hmm. That does not look like skulk to me. In an episode like this, there's always at least one facepalm moment. <laughs> it's still sent to Minecraft Nether. So the file that we were working on before with the whole skulk and the bedrock roof and everything, whoops, is called Talon Space Noise. Now it will work. <laughs> we also might take fall damage. So this ought to be fairly interesting as soon as we hit new terrain. Do you think I can ender pearl over there? <laughs> I feel like ender pearls are definitely the way to go though here because we don't have to risk our elytra. Like if we just get totally, you know, drown in lava or whatever, it's no big deal. We lose a couple ender pearls, but we have like a million of those, so it doesn't matter. Aha! Uh, ha. This does appear to be the new gen border. We actually might want to turn some of our uh, world gen settings down. So theoretically, there is a roof or uh, a, a floor down there. Um, we're <laughs> we're gonna throw the ender pearl into what appears to be nothingness, and I think we're gonna land on skulk, maybe. There could also be nothing down there. I I'm not sure. Definitely should have landed by now. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the skulk didn't work. New plan. We need we need that system that we have set up. Uh... Oh, no, the elevator froze. Oh, because I logged out. Never log out when a <laughs> slime block thing is in action. Oh, boy. I'll have to flap there and get it. But yeah, if we uh, if we go set up the thing that lets us kind of float around in space while still using up our hunger, we can set that to work on, like in the entire dimension. So that might be our next step. Oh yeah, if you use 255 um, levitation effect, that's how you're able to get the, the sort of floating straight. So I'll just copy this into chat <laughs> this is this is how you can move commands you just uh slash slash and then copy them into chat and that way you can press up and you can snag them back and then you can copy paste funny little trick then i just gotta check for the dimension like that all right so that should allow us to float in our space dimension probably so why don't we go try? We have flight. We have flight. Also, my hunger is really low. <laughs> yeah, so we have the ability to float. Um, I actually can't sprint anymore, which means I can't go up. <laughs> um, so there's that. I wonder what's in this chest. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Well, that ender pearl is gone. Um, yeah, the the 
<laughs> if you're too far underneath the chest, you can't you can't open it properly. Although it doesn't look like there's anything good in there, so yeah. Ha 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 ha. Figured it out. That was surprisingly difficult. So we have a bedrock roof up there and then a skulk floor below. So the fix was pretty simple. I just had to change the default block to be skulk. And then down at the bottom here, I changed this to be air. So basically I just flip flopped them. And now that the testing is done, we can change this bedrock to be skulk. Boom. <laughs> Dude, custom dimensions are hard. All right, so let's go into the new area and see how it's supposed to look. Yeah. All right, so we have a floor and we have a roof. We have these uh, structures that are spawning, um, but those I think will be pretty easy to get rid of. Man, I don't want to make this thing too big, but I do feel like we could almost go up to 256 on the height. We'll worry about the details later. Let's uh, let's just do the big stroke stuff for now. So our canvas is ready. The next thing we need to do is work on a biome. So this is the warped forest biome and we're gonna make two. So the first one's gonna be easy. It's just gonna be empty space. So we're actually gonna delete a lot of this stuff except for probably like sky color. And we're gonna remove a lot of these features. We'll probably, we might try one or two of those in our, our next biome, but. The goal here is to keep it simple. Well, actually, wait, I just had an idea. You know what might be kind of cool is if, uh, if we could maybe spawn like a phantom. So there's a monster tab and then there's a creature tab. I'm gonna guess a phantom actually is a monster. So in our dimension, we just have to update it to the new name, which I have, wait, talent space has to go in first. I called it though, just space, <laughs> cause it's just space. <laughs> um, I think we can leave all this as it is. Oh no. Oh, that's a lot of phantoms. <laughs> I didn't expect, oh no. I didn't expect them to spawn at the bottom. That looks a little funny, but. Uh... So then technically, yeah, we're in just space. Okay, now we're getting into the more fun stuff. All right, so let's adjust this max count here. We want the phantoms to spawn in groups of one. And then what we're also going to do, I noticed there was a spawn cost thing up here, and I assume that this limits how many can spawn. So this is the, this is the same spawn cost as an enderman in a warped forest. I just copy pasted. Um, so we'll just try that for now. And I believe the reason we're not getting the sky color we want is actually because of the effects thing in the type file that we made. So I'm actually going to change this to be um, the overworld. Uh, let's get into making the actual biome. Okay, so this is the end highlands um, saved under a different name. I actually called it asteroids. I'm hoping that we can make it look sort of just like rocks floating. Actually, you know what would kind of make sense on rocks is just like little bug thingies. And the smallest thing we have is like endermites. We could also do silver fish, actually. That would make sense, silver fish. I don't see a block choice here. So we're just gonna try this. It might pick skulk, I'm not sure. <laughs> Alrighty, that is too bright. We have clouds. There's a lot less phantoms though, that's nice. <laughs> I feel like phantoms kind of make sense out here. Like they definitely look like they don't need to breathe air. <laughs> okay, now this is a bit strange. So we can use the locate command to see like, is our biome anywhere nearby? But it's not. Like locate can find stuff with like a far ways away, like a long, long ways. And so if it's not finding our biome, I don't think that biome spawned in anywhere. So I'm looking at the uh, nether biomes and also I took a look at the overworld biomes as reference. And my basic conclusion here is the set of numbers need to be unique for each biome. So all we should have to do is just change one of these numbers. I feel like just space should be all zeros. Um, so we can make the asteroids have some special number. 
let's change the asteroids to have like point let's say point two temperature so they're a little bit warmer than just space i'm gonna just do locate biome here before i die hey there is one yes i think we were right about they need a unique set of numbers yeah let's just let's just see this here we're gonna teleport there oh the sky color is different A real problem though is down here, Minecraft air. So this turns like all of the generation, the nether generation, the normal, the normal caves and twists and turns, it turns it all into air, I think. Um, and apparently that includes our asteroids. So I'm gonna change this to skulk and we will see if that maybe works. There is also a chance that end generation is too special. Ah, we're stuck. Hmm. Yeah, so as soon as we changed, you know, got rid of that air thing, all of the nether cave stuff came back. Okay, I've realized something here, and that is we're thinking about this all wrong. So I've been trying to change this generation per biome, but you can't do that. This is for the whole dimension, uh, this terrain. So instead of thinking about like a complete and total void as the blank canvas, this is our blank canvas, and then we need to turn this into void. So this could be the asteroids biome, for example, and then we need to add what's called a carver. The nether is way fun, <laughs> way more fun if you can fly around actually. Um, but what we need to do is we need to add like a carver, which uh, is sort of how like these caves get generated. If you fill it all up with the same block and then you have a carver that chops out air like this, you get a cave. So we need one that will chop out everything for our just space biome. Oh, 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 I see something. Okay, replaceable, Minecraft nether carver replaceables. That's probably stuff like netherrack, right? Probably not endstone. So we're gonna need to make a custom one of these to even test it at all, I think. So we should be able to do skulk replaceable world gen. And that, I believe, will have the ability to replace anything. So that should um, show us what's going on here. Okay, let's bump up the probability to max. Let's make this number really big. Oh, closer, closer. I'm using a canyon carver to, uh, to chop through, but it seems that it's maybe not thick enough yet. It does appear to be stretching all the way up to the uh or from the bottom to the top so that's really good this also might work really good for asteroids actually too Ooh! oh no it finally happened i tried to exit out of the world because it wasn't loading into the dimension and it's not exiting <laughs> i may have made the carver too powerful and um I think it was just like really hard for it to generate because I was just sitting in a corner and nothing was happening. So we got a problem. Okay. Oh, there's thunder. Yeah. So I had to delete that and load in. Uh oh, it's kind of lagging again. Oh, not so bad this time. Well, we can still access the world and this wait this might be actually what i was trying to get yeah mostly these things are gone it looks like <laughs> yeah i had to back off some of the things i changed because apparently one of them is laggy um, but the thickness and the y scale seems to be pretty much okay so we really only have like one thing showing up here i'm probably gonna die who cares we got a biome that looks halfway decent. Oh, by the way, I don't think I mentioned it, but I turned the effects to be the nether, so you can't see all the way down to the ceiling, or all the way down to the floor and all the way up to the ceiling. I think it makes you feel a little bit more like you're in space. So we could just make a modified version of this carver for the asteroid field. Okay, I think this is going to go a lot speedier for the asteroid. So this is the, uh, the thickness, and we are going to tone this down because I, I made a clone of this for the asteroid field 
So we'll, we'll half that, put it at 16. And then I'm basically going to repeat this process, but with the can, or no, with the cave carvers instead of the canyon ones. Well, would you look at this? <laughs> this is a pretty cool asteroid field, right? The shapes are a little weird, but honestly, I'm just happy to have something that even resembles it. This biome stuff or dimension stuff is hard, man. It's fun though. There's a lot of depth to it. I mean, you can see like we made an asteroid field. Like that's a pretty unique shape, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot of control you have. This is really cool, but there's one final touch that I want to put on that I think will really just kind of tie this all together. And to do that, we're going to pull something out of the deep, dark biome. So these are features. We're not going to go super into them. We're just going to use some preset ones that I think will look cool. And we're just going to paste it in here. All right. For the final time, we shall pop through the portal and see our custom biome. <laughs> you can see it takes a long time to load. Uh, these carvers, there's probably a better way of doing it. I just don't know. <laughs> it's loading. Give it a bit. Oh, there we go. Ah, yes. Yeah, so now we got some skulk stuff going on. A lot of skulk stuff, actually. So this is just space, of course. And there's really nothing here. There's no asteroids. Just phantoms. Yeah, this biome probably doesn't need all the skulk stuff because it just ends up on the ground. But let's go look at the asteroid field. That was the real crazy one. Not very far away. So they're spawning fairly close to each other. Oh, it's got to load in. It's loading, it's loading, it's loading, and... Ta-da! Look at this. We have our asteroids, and they have different colors. They, you know, they've been turned a little bit into skulk, and you get kind of that... Uh, that starry look as well. <laughs> it's kind of troll that the uh, I didn't change the purple background, but honestly, it made it really easy to tell which biome I was in if I didn't change that, so I left it. <laughs> but yeah, look at this. This is the asteroids. <laughs> and we got some little alien bugs here. <laughs> oh, there's natural shriekers. I, you know, I didn't think about this, but does this uh? Oh, can we summon the warden here? I honestly have no idea. Let's try it as like the last thing for this episode. Oh, oh, it can spawn the warden. Dude, the warden's actually kind of alien. Wait, this makes a lot of sense. This is cool. He also has like no gravity so it's pretty much impossible for him to be like doing anything he might be able to attack though oh <laughs> that's awesome that's so cool well there you have it <laughs> we made an alien infested space dimension we're totally working more on this in the future there's so much here um, this is pretty fun I like this idea. I always wanted a space dimension. We'll have to like add reasons to come here and all that kind of cool stuff too. But I think that that is going to do it for this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed all the cool dimension stuff. But that's going to be it for me. So I'll see you next time. Later, later.